Welcome to graphing quadratic functions in the form f of x equals ax squared plus c. These functions are vertical translations of the parent function. The parent function is this black dotted function right here that we discovered in the previous lesson, vertex axis of symmetry. All of the functions that we talk about today are going to be vertical translations of this function, and they're going to be vertically translated or shifted up or down the y-axis. So they all will have the same axis of symmetry, the line x equals 0. The vertex will be changing. It will be translating up or down on the y-axis. So we have the parent function. So this blue function here is a vertical translation up C units when C is greater than zero, and a vertically translated down C units when C is less than zero. The vertex of the graph of the function AX squared plus C is zero C. Here we see it's positive C. The axis of symmetry is always the line x equals 0. Let's graph. So we have function r that is x squared plus 3. So c is positive 3. We are going to graph it and compare it to the parent function. So we're going to create a table of values and plot the points. Here's our table for function r. I picked the inputs negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We evaluate. Negative 2 goes in for x. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. Here are our points plotted. The red line is function r. The black dotted function parabola is the parent function. So we'll notice that the vertex has been translated as all points on the function from the parent function, one, two, three units up. That's what C has done. C is also the y-intercept. Notice that's where it crosses the y-axis. The vertex is the ordered pair zero, three. The axis of symmetry is the line x equals zero. Let's graph one that we're subtracting c, that c is negative. Now we have function f, which is x squared minus 4. We're going to compare this to the parent function. To graph it, let's create a table of values, and then we'll plot the points. I used the same five inputs and evaluated. Let's evaluate this function s for a value of x of negative 2. Input negative 2 for x, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 subtract 4 is 0. Continue on for all of your inputs. Here is our parent function. Axis of symmetry is the line x equals 0. The vertex is 0, 0. S is our red function. The vertex has been translated down 4 units. We go down because c is negative. Down 4 units. So our y-intercept and our vertex. It crosses the y-axis at negative 4. C is always in all forms of a quadratic function when it's written in standard form. C is the y-intercept. In this case, C is the y-coordinate of the vertex. Okay, your turn. Let's graph function t, 3x squared plus 2, and then compare it to the parent function. You can follow along with me, or if you'd like to try this one on your own, pause the video, try graphing it and comparing it, and hit play when you're ready to check your work. So first, I'm going to create a table of values and plot the points. I pick the same five inputs. Again, we plug in the value for x. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. So here's our graph. The blue is function t. Its vertex is 0, 2. And the parent function here. So let's compare it to the parent function. This is a vertical translation up two units from the parent function. 
and it is also a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Your turn. We have function f that is negative one half x squared plus three and function g, which is a transformation of function f. So first, we're gonna describe the transformation of the graph of f to the graph of g. The change to g is subtract five. Graph the functions f and g in the same coordinate plane so that you can observe if you don't see instantly what they are. And then we're gonna write an equation that represents function g in terms of x. Go ahead and pause the video and come back and hit play when you wanna check your work. First, let's talk about describing the transformation. Function g is vertically translated five units down, five units down of the graph of f. Now let's graph these functions in the same coordinate plane. Here's my table of values for function f. I've used the same five inputs, plugged them in, and found their outputs. I did the same for function g, and here they are graphed in the same coordinate plane. So function f is the blue line. Remember, I'm not comparing to the parent function now. I'm comparing g to this function f. So if I talk about the parent function, function f has been translated up three units. It's been reflected in the x-axis, and it is a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. But if we're going to compare function g to function f, all that has changed is that it has been vertically translated down one, two, three, four, five units. So let's write an equation that represents function g in terms of x. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to substitute. We know that f is equal to negative one half x squared plus three, so we're gonna take that expression and replace f of x with that right here. And we still have the subtract five from the transformation. Next step, combine like terms. Plus three, subtract five. Together is negative two. So our final answer is the function g of x is equal to negative one half x squared minus two. Your turn. Here are three problems for you to do. Graph each of the functions below and compare problems one and two to the parent function, f of x equals x squared. So for problems one and two, you graph mm -hmm. function r and the parent function f, two, graph function s and graph the parent function. In problem three, it's just like the previous problem. You're gonna graph function f and function g. Describe function g and what it is, what type of transformation it is to the graph of f. Graph them and compare them in the same coordinate plane and then write function g in terms of x. Go ahead and hit pause. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your answers. Here's our solution for problem one. We have function r that is 2x squared minus one. This compared to the parent function is a vertical stretch by a factor of two and it has been vertically translated down one unit. In order to graph it, I'm gonna create my table of values, my inputs, plug them in to solve for my outputs, go ahead and graph. So the black dotted line is the parent function, and you can see that the blue function has been shrunk, I mean stretched, sorry, my apologies. The blue line is stretched, it is going closer to the y-axis, every, Output has increased by a factor of two, and the vertex has shifted down one unit. So the vertex and y-intercept of the function r are zero, negative one. The axis of symmetry is the same. Question two, function f, s, is a reflection in the x-axis. It's a vertical shrink by a factor of one-half, one-fourth. So it has been reflected, this negative sign tells us that it's a reflection in the x-axis. One-fourth shows us that it's a vertical shrink by a factor of one-fourth. 
and this shows us C is positive 2, that it has vertically translated two units up compared to the parent function. I create my table of values and my graph. So the black dotted line is the parent function. You can see that the blue function S is opening down versus opening up because it's a reflection in the x-axis. They have the same axis of symmetry, and this vertex has shifted up two units. And you can see that the blue function is wider because it has been vertically shrunk by a factor of one fourth. So it's shrinking down towards the x-axis. Question three asks you to graph and compare. So function G compared to graph function F has been vertically translated up seven units. So it's saying take the function F and add seven to it. That will vertically translate it seven units up. Here's my table of values for my function F and my table of values for function G. And here are they both graphed on the coordinate plane. So the first one, is blue, that's my function f, noticing that it is, compared to the parent function, been vertically shrunk by a factor of one half, and it has vertically translated down four units. So if we started here with our parent function, the blue function is down, zero, negative four is my vertex. Now, g is translating up seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so the vertex of function g is at 0, 3, which is also my y-intercept compared to 0, negative 4. To write g in terms of x, I'm going to take function f, and I'm going to substitute this expression in for f of x. And then we need to combine like terms. Negative 4 plus 7 is 3. Noticing that this 3 is also my y-intercept. Thank you for joining me today. Go ahead and give me a like or a thumbs up if you liked it. And I hope you'll come back and join us for the next lesson.